Ragnar? Isn't that the bloke who died on the telly? That's right folks, we are going to be spending today painting Ragnar Blackmane, showing you how I went from bare plastic to this. I hope I've got my hand sizes right there. So I did this in a single sitting. That's kind of the, the cool thing about it. Um, I managed to compile a set of techniques for it that got it all together in about, I probably did about nine hours on it. So, you know, it was a bit of an extended single sitting. But with the stuff I'm going to show you, I think it's uh, it's pretty doable to be able to bring this down into to one manageable sitting. So let's take a look at how I kind of speed paint, I suppose, like speed display painted? Is that what we want to call I don't know, I don't know. Look, it's a fast and it's a no stress way to paint a really nice character. Let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into any actual painting, I did as usual as I often do with characters, pre-work this with the airbrush. So I started off with a black undercoat of Steinal Res Black Primer, and then on top of that, I went for some Heather Blue from Reaper Master Series paints, and a bit of uh, Ice Yellow mixed into that from Viejo Model Color. You totally don't need to start this with the values all sketched in using the airbrush. You can totally do this manually if you wish to. It just takes a bit longer, and at the end of the day, like. Like I said, one of the cool things about this was that I think it looks really nice, but I did it in a single sitting. So, you know, forgive me for using the faster method. Okay, now I'm going to start adding a bit more ice yellow in to that sort of uh, top colour that's already down on the airbrush workup. And I'm also eventually going to start adding a bit of white in as I start to work some more kind of textural highlights in. Get a bit of sharpness, get a bit of reflectivity going into those highlights. It's um, it's pretty quick actually to do this once you've got the airbrush base down, and that's kind of why I love starting off from the airbrush because this is just sort of two highlights, pretty sketchy, pretty quick, pretty easy. You just kind of get them chucked on. Okay, and then the first scary thing, but again, it is for quickness, and that is the important thing. One of the great things about what I'm about to do is that it's very quick and very easy. So we're going to get a black oil wash all over this guy to uh, to get some panel lining on the go and just to sort of create a few little shade transitions as well. And then literally blast that with the hairdryer, get it dry, get some white spirit on a soft paintbrush. In this case, I'm using a Broken Toad Synthetic and just start sweeping that oil wash off of the top surfaces. It's so easy. And this is like... 20 30 minutes work and we've got really nice good looking display quality power armor it gives you so much more time to concentrate on all the fiddly bits like it's really really useful okay so next look we have to do some boring parts right it can't be all action uh i had to take a tour around the miniature now and just start blacking stuff out anything that needed to be metallic anything that was going to be a dark color anything that was actually going to be black I have to kind of go around that and uh, you know, just start blacking it back out. So I just got my scale 75 art black here and started doing that. I'm not gonna show you the whole process of me doing it because that's boring, but you know, at least I've put this little clip up of uh, what it looks like. That's, you know, that's something. Okay, now there's quite a bit of red on this miniature as well, like the belt, some of the accessories, the entire inside lining of his cloak. So I wanna get all of that done. Uh, corn red is gonna be my base for that. And then to build up highlights, I'm just going to start adding successive amounts of uh, sunny skin tone from Vallejo Model Color. That's just a kind of simple foolproof way that you can highlight reds without too much trouble. And it's something that I like to regularly use. So it was on my palette, you know, that's kind of why I chose it. To be honest with you, it was on my palette. And then something that I did notice was that those reds were looking a little bit washed out. I wanted to bring some vibrancy back into them. So I just filtered them all over with some Blood Angels red contrast paint. I did thin it down a little bit. I chucked a bit of medium into it just to kind of make it a bit more transparent, a bit less heavy on the pigment. And just put it all over all those red areas. It acts as a bit of a shade. It acts as a bit of a color filter. It kind of does a few jobs at once and it was really useful here. So that was nice and quick and simple. Okay, now the wolf pelt. Now look, I'll be completely straight up with you here. It is hard to show this properly on camera, okay? Um, I was struggling to get good, clean footage of it. But what I've essentially done with this wolf pelt is I painted it black first, and then I've wet blended from Rhinox hide out to iron rack skin from the middle to the outer. So all the sort of centermost parts of the pelt started off just with a wet layer of uh, Rhinox hide added to them. And then I just got some damp iron rack skin on my brush and just started feathering out and then reloaded my brush with iron rack skin and started feathering out again until I eventually get this nice kind of white trim around the edge. 
From there, just a little overbrush of Mornfang Brown to warm it up a bit. And then to pull out the texture again after doing all of that wet blending, just chuck a bit of Agrax Earthshade over it as I'm showing you here. Now that's a really, really simple wolf pelt. You might want to sort of pick out a few edge highlights in uh, in Iron Rack Skin again after you've done that Agrax, but it looked really nice and it was a really straightforward way of doing it. It was very easy, like wet blending on surfaces like that where you don't have to be particularly accurate to a specific shape. It is dead easy. It's just really, really hard to show on camera because you've kind of got to constantly be turning the miniature around and spinning it about and it doesn't make for the best footage in the world. But trust me, really worth having a go at doing wolf pelts that way because it is a lot simpler than you'd think. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next part of the actual painting. Uh, the sword blade is probably the next thing that I need to do, frost fang. Um, I wanted kind of just to do this pretty much exactly how it's done in the box art, but I like a bit more texture in my work, as you know. So I took Avalon Sunset as the base coat, uh, glazed it down with some Mornfang brown, and then once I'd got, you know, a nice bit of sort of depth and warmth to it using that Mornfang, just a bit of ice yellow to add in some uh, some edge highlights, but also just to put some sort of scratches across the blade and stuff like that. Not going overboard with this, like it is a relic weapon. They do take care of it. It will be sort of cleaned and maintained regularly. More just enough kind of textural work that I can express my stylistic input without it not telling the right story. Okay, now here's going to come a bit where I'm going to skip a bunch of stuff. Don't get mad at me. The only reason I'm skipping a bunch of stuff here is because we're about to do the TMM, and literally last week, both of the videos were on my TMM techniques for gold and silver. All the TMM in this is gold and silver. If you want to see how I paint gold and silver these days, just pop back to last week's releases, and you will see a couple of true metallic videos showing my gold and silver workup techniques. You're more than welcome to watch them and enjoy them after this video, but I didn't want to waste time showing you how I did them because... I've literally just shown you how I do them. Uh, I also skipped over some of just the little fiddly accessories here. Again, just because I don't think it's a good investment of your time to sit here and watch me talking about you painting a tiny little leather strap or a, you know, a tooth or something. I think we all kind of know how we're going to tackle those little accessories. Now what that means, because we've skipped over those bits, is that we can get back into something juicy now. So what we're going to do is concentrate on the head. And face painting is like literally one of my favourite things these days. I absolutely love it. So first of all, the big mane of hair. We're going to just use uh, our Scale 75 Art Black and just keep adding bits of ice yellow to it and building up highlights. Um, these are kind of semi-transparent highlights. They're not as thin as a glaze, but they're not as thick as a layer. And I just kind of build them up over each other, focusing more and more light towards the areas that I want to show a catching light. It takes a little bit of time to build up, but like hair is a pretty small surface area anyway. So it doesn't really take long. Um, it just, you know, you just have to sort of apply quite a few layers. If you were doing this on something like armor, it might take you quite a long time to do it this way. I'd maybe look at an alternate method, but for hair, I think it works quite nicely. When it comes to the actual face of the miniature, I've gone for um, a, a recipe again that I developed quite recently, uh, something that I sort of first stumbled upon by accident in my Marnius Calgar video. No washes or shades needed or anything, just started off with reddish flesh from Viejo's Nocturna range, and we're going to build that up through sunny skin tone, and then eventually we're going to build it up into ice yellow. On the very, very tips, I mean, I'm talking the tiniest little tips, there's maybe three dots on the whole face, I did add just a little touch of very thin down pure white and that was only because they were looking just a touch more yellow than I wanted them to and so just that little bit of thin down slightly transparent pure white just sort of sets back some of that yellowness desaturates it a little bit and just makes everything blend together a bit nicer but the face that we got out of the other side of it is a face that I'm really really proud of I love how this came out it's bright it's got a slightly kind of cartoony aesthetic to it which is something that I'm kind of into actually and I think it's a really cool and quick way to paint a face and so with all of that said and done, I know you've seen a little photo of what he looks like, but let's go to the proper reveal. Let's get the lazy Susan out, strap him in, get that 360 all around footage on the go, and you can enjoy Primaris Ragnar as we've got him done.
So what did you think, folks? I did a few things differently, I think. I tackled a few things in some slightly more interesting ways. And there was, you know, a couple of just stock and staple things that we're all used to, especially those bits that, as I said, I glossed over because I didn't really want to bore you with them. If you like the way I've done this or if there's particular techniques that stood out to you, let's chat about it in the comments. Drop something below or get hold of me on social media. There are always links in the description of the video to all of my social medias. You can also like the video if you liked it. You can subscribe and enable notifications to stay up to date on what I'm doing here on YouTube. And if you really love the content, you can support its creation from as little as one American dollar a month or whatever your local equivalent is by signing up to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash that Mr. Shy. Again, there is a link in the description of the video. So thank you so much for your time this week, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Let's roll those end credits. Thanks for watching, everybody.